The Federalist Party was the first official political party to emerge within the United States, and even in the years which preceded its existence, the ideology of federalism was the most dominant in American political thought, at least among those directly engaged in politics. And this distinction is quite important as it would ultimately be through the rallying of mass popular opposition during the 1800 election that federalism would begin to crumble and ultimately become extinct as a party only some years later. But what precisely was federalism? What was it that the Federalists believed, and how did their policy impact the history and future of the United States? Federalism, as we can assess merely from its name, promoted the idea of an American Federation, a proper union of the states rather than a series of independent entities or a loose alliance. It was this shared desire between the representatives of the states along with a shared desire for independence from Britain that ultimately allowed the war for independence to prove successful rather than remain a localized and disorganized affair. It was during the Albany Congress of 1754 that serious efforts were first made by the states to pursue a higher degree of cooperation with one another, primarily to establish a common defense and shared policy in regard to American-Indian relations as a response to the outbreak of the French-Indian War. This Albany plan as it came to be known was proposed by Ben Franklin, and would have entailed the union of 11 colonies into an entity still under British control, but now administered by a single governor or president general. The plan, despite its support at the Albany Congress, failed to see acceptance when returned to the individual colonies for approval. Though still trying times forced closer cooperation by those who saw merit in such a union. By 1774, 12 of what we know as the 13 colonies had come together through the First Continental Congress in the shared pursuit of greater sovereignty from Britain, though the idea of total independence was yet to be fully accepted. But as the months wore on, favorability for independence grew, as did the favorability of unity. The Continental Congress would eventually become the de facto governing body of the rebelling colonies, transforming into the Confederated Congress upon the adoption of the Articles of Confederation. Ultimately, the colonies would wrestle their independence from Britain, and the higher governing role once filled by the British was left the responsibility of the Congress of the Confederation. However, with the limited powers granted to it by the Articles, it could not effectively enforce its rule over the many states and it was soon realized by a majority of the governing class that the government must be granted greater authority, and that authority would need to be enshrined by a new constitution, thus giving rise to the first incarnation of American politicians who were known as Federalists. Now before we go any further, let's take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Established Titles. Tell me, do you long for a title of distinguished character? Does Mr. or Mrs. not quite cut it for you? Well, how about an upgrade to Lord or Lady? At Established Titles, you can acquire that title by purchasing a square foot of land in Scotland. The Scots have a custom of bestowing upon landowners the titles of Lord or Lady, so by purchasing this little parcel of land, you too can enjoy this honor and use it in place of suffixes wherever it may apply. Your purchase also goes toward a good cause, as Established Titles works with the one tree planted and trees for the future charities to match every purchase with the planting of a tree. Plus, you'll get one of these elegant looking frame certificates and a unique code to locate your plot. Right now, Established Titles is offering a full 10% off every order when you go to EstablishedTitles.com slash Monsieur and use promo code Monsieur at checkout. These frames are delightful gifts for family and friends, old and young alike, so if you're thinking of a last minute gift to pick up, hey, why not try this one? Now. Back to the video. Though still not a formal political party, being a Federalist meant supporting the Constitution, a closer union, and a strong federal government. Of course, some representatives of some states were hesitant to surrender their sovereignty or to inconvenience themselves for the betterment of other states. Some states had even sought to ratify the Constitution with the inclusion of secession clauses in their ratifications, ultimately defeating the purpose of a perpetual union. These anti-federalists largely desired a continuation of the status quo, that is, allowing the states to operate mostly independently, with it being clear that the country could not succeed as a united entity if greater measures of integration were taken. The federalists ultimately emerged victorious and made the constitution the new foundational document of the country, though not without certain assurances provided by the Bill of Rights as a compromise to appease the anti-federalists. As a result of the constitution, America now had a strong central government and a single executive, a president. That president was George Washington. Washington's administration was dominated by federalists, and he himself was strongly sympathetic to the ideology of the faction as it began to better define itself by expanding into policy outside of national unity. Federalism as an ideology beyond merely the concept of federation held roots in old conservative values and British traditions. Most federalists had the sense that Britain was not an enemy, but merely could not properly and fairly govern the states as needed, and thus the war for independence wasn't intended to abandon and forget the culture and values of Britain in favor of some separate newly concocted identity. 
but to allow the states to do what is in their own best interest. Many Federalists, who were largely of Anglo stock themselves, still felt a kinship with Britain, held a stake in British trade, and felt that Britain would make a natural ally abroad once the US had achieved stability. Federalist economics strongly favored shipping and manufacturing, and so it only made sense to maintain a positive partnership with the chief naval power of the day, not to mention an empire that still held possessions in the Americas and would no doubt need to interact with the US because of this. Federalists also saw it as being in America's interest to not provoke Britain again precisely because it did retain a presence on the continent that could threaten the still young and unstable country. Like the British, the Federalists also attributed value to the idea of noble rule, although within a more republican framework which sought to create a meritocratic system of moral well-informed and capable voters who elected even more moral and capable representatives. Federalists believe strongly in a natural order and hierarchy in which the very best of society rise to the top. While the common masses occupy the bottom, the intention being not for the elite to exploit the commoners, as might be stereotypically perceived of Europe's aristocratic systems, but for these elites appointed by the people to use their powers in order to create a society that maximized personal freedom, prosperity, and opportunity for all within the bounds necessary to ensure national unity, progress, and strength. This was a very moralistic model that demanded an enforced law in order to ensure a system of fair play in which all who were able could rise up the ranks and gain political power by demonstrating their morality through adherence to law, as well as their capability and financial stability through property ownership. Stemming from federalizing policy, federalism went hand in hand with the federal adoption of individual state debts and financial responsibilities, as well as the establishment of a national bank through which the nation's wealth could be more easily managed and controlled. Federalism meant the building of a strong federal military to provide for a common defense of the country in place of militias defending individual states with little to no coordination with one another. Plainly, the Federalists sought to turn what was originally a loose assortment of states into a single cohesive unit that operated like clockwork through strong well-enforced laws. A religious and moralistic culture based on that of Britain, and institutions with the wide-reaching powers necessary to stabilize, protect, manage, and develop the country into a truly unified entity. The Federalists' niche favorability among the Anglo business elites of New England ultimately proved insufficient to keep up with the rise of the populist agrarian democratic republicans, and though the Federalists officially only held the presidency once through the Adams administration, Washington's strong Federalist leanings and those of the Continental Congress before him were essential in shaping the United States of America into the federalized and centralized state it would become. The US of Z thanks you for watching. Support your legion by liking the video, or join our ranks by subscribing for more. Mr. Z out.